is day number eight of the campaign. We have seven more days. But as they say in politics, seven days can be a long time. So we cannot be complacent. Oh, before I continue, I forgot to mention, I'm the filler act before we get Dato Ambika Srinivasan. Can we give her a big hand? <laughs> you know, if you go to uh, some more remote parts of the country, not like Panda Utama, you know, and uh, you talk to Tamil folks, especially the women folk, they call Ambika Irambo Penmani. Irambo Penmani, you know what that means? The Iron Lady. Don't you think that's an appropriate term? We didn't create that, they created it. Anyway, that's Ambika's story to tell. I will speak until I feel my voice needs a short break. Then I'll hand it over to her and move on to the next event. As I was saying, seven days can be a long time in politics, but we have to hang in there because there is a good feeling all over the country. There is a good feeling that we are going to see something really historic. I think there's no other word for it. Historic on the 5th of May, where we will remove Amno Barisan National as the federal government for the first time in Malaysian history. You know, I came back to this country in 1986 after my studies overseas. I started law practice. I got into activism, human rights activism in particular. And this was, this flowed from my exposure in the UK after my first degree here, studying law and the open much more open, much more stimulating environment in the UK drew me towards activism, which I carried on when I came back. Uh, and that led me right into an interesting episode in Malaysian history called Operasi Lalang. Have you all remember that? Yeah. We all remember that. <laughs> and who's the infamous person responsible for that? So that was my introduction to democracy a la Malaysia. And then, a few months down the road, it was the sacking of Tun Saleh Abbas. And then I can see my lawyer friends in the audience too. They, you know, we were all part of that. We watched that episode with shock and horror as we saw the institutions being damaged, even destroyed, well, damaged severely. So that is the path I started on. And um, you know, at that point in time, uh, I mean, being a student of politics also, besides law, uh, me and my activist friends, we, we knew we were in for a long haul. Change in Malaysia was not going to be easy because we were dealing with a very hegemonic government uh, which was essentially authoritarian, but had the facade of a democracy. And that's quite a clever act too. And, but I stayed out of politics. I stayed out of politics because at that point in time, uh, the racial frame of politics had no appeal for me, for persons like me. In 1998, things changed. When, after the sacking of Anwar Ibrahim, the reformasi move, movement 
began and myself and other friends, we had people like Tian Chua, my colleague Tian Chua, Irene Fernandez and many others who said to ourselves, it's time to stop being outside the political movement because it was people who were on the move. And if we didn't get into it, we would be left out. We needed to be in it to shape it. So that started my journey in politics in 1998. I formally, I joined Party Riot Malaysia at that time in, as a formal member in 1999. Was named a vice president. Worked to merge it with Party Kadilan National then, which is now Party Kadilan Rakyat. And that is the journey which I traveled until today. And of course in 2008, and I think many of you were part of that first tsunami in 2008, where we saw for the first time in Malaysian history, a substantial opposition came into parliament. 82 parliament seats, five states. And all because of you, ladies and gentlemen, and many others like you all over the country. I stand here today because of you, and I, and I remember that. But now, we've got something even more momentous about to happen. And uh, this, I mean, I'm telling this story because I never thought it would happen this fast. But fast meaning the time frame of change. And, but I think, my gut tells me, my gut feeling tells me, based on what we see on the ground, based on what our colleagues tell us, our colleagues all over the country, from Sabah, from Sarawak, right up to Perlis, Kedah, I think today there is a majority of Malaysians like us all who are hungry for change in this country and to remove Amno Barisan National from the seat of power in Portugal. I think we have had enough of people who like $24 million rings. I think we've had enough of people who walk into boutiques in Sydney and spend 100,000 Aussie dollars in a twinkling of an eye. We're tired of that. We're tired of seeing our money, our public money, our taxes, this country's wealth being robbed from us, right underneath our nose. And I think this time, all races have decided to stand up. And what I want to share with you today, because I walk the streets. You know, in Malaysia, this is the difference about election campaigns. Yesterday, I had a friend from Germany, a social activist friend. We've known each other for 25 years. He was here. He wanted to see me for a few minutes. And I said, the only way you're going to get to see me for a few minutes, you sit in my car when I go from Chama to Chama. So that's what he did yesterday, plus uh, the walkabouts we did. Then he asked me, why are you doing these walkabouts? I said, there's, otherwise there's no way people get to see us. And that's the difference, because in Germany, as it is in most democratic countries, the national discourse on politics is done on national television, is done on national radio, is done on national newspapers, daily newspapers. Not in Malaysia. This is the problem. So we, we appreciate you coming here tonight, because at least we get to talk to you. But uh, in Germany, nobody does this. I mean, people do much less of this kind of stuff. But the point I want to make is this, that I walk the streets from about 8 in the morning and I stop about 12 or 1 in the night. And believe me, I think this is what is the growing excitement now, that the key vote which is going to come from the Malay community, the decisive vote is well on the way. The young Malay vote is with us, is with Pakatan Raya today. <laughs> and the survey that has just been published in Malaysia, the, I forget what they call it, the UM, 
University of Malaya survey confirms it. It confirms what we're seeing on the ground, that the, the shift is happening. Despite all that the Barista National has done through the media to demonize Anwar Ibrahim, to, de no, to, to make Pakatan Riot look like a bunch of idiots, you know, despite all that, a majority of people today prefer Anwar Ibrahim in that survey as Prime Minister, a majority prefer the manifesto of Pakatan Riot. Right? <laughs> and the best news coming from that survey was we had a, 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 a real age amongst the Malay respondents in that survey. And I think that is really the best news I want to share today. Because we know, we know we can't make political change in this country just with a non-Malay vote. We can't. And I'll say this to all of you straightforwardly. I mean, I'm sure we have some Malay friends here, some Indians, most of you Chinese and whatever. But the point is, we need to appreciate that. That is way, the way Amnu Barisan National has set it up. But the great news is that, and I think they know this as well, that the ground is shifting. And they're shifting because the realities which William Long just described to all of us, I think people know. People know what's happening in this country. And I think they're prepared to accept, they know that Pakatan Raya is not perfect. They know we're not there yet. And we don't pretend to be perfect. But I think right now, there is a clear majority that is saying ABU. You know what ABU is, right? What is that? Anything but Amno. And you can add a stroke PN as well. So that we can mop up MC and MIC while you're at it. <laughs> but you know, it's interesting that even in the MIC, you know, okay, you get an occasional glimpse of political wisdom. Occasional. Because you would have seen the statement made by Vice President Saravanan, MIC Vice President Saravanan, when he said, MIC will not be campaigning for Zul Kifli Nordin, but we will campaign for all other partisan national candidates. So even he realized what a stupid move it was to put up Zul Kifli Nordin as a candidate. But I say, thank God for Amno Barisan National Advisors. Whoever advised the Prime Minister that Zul Kifli Nordin would be acceptable as a candidate, did us a great favor. And some people actually think that we pay Dr. Mahathir quietly on the side. I can assure you we don't. We can't afford him. So ladies and gentlemen, I dreamt of this day for a long time, and I think it's going to happen. Yeah. On the 5th of May, we start a journey together, where we start building a country that is capable of being a truly great country. This country is blessed with huge natural wealth. We have the highest, amongst the highest at least, uh, resource per capita in the world. We are that blessed. We are out of the earthquake zone. Another blessing if you look at it. We have the greatest cultural wealth of any country in the world. No country has this. We have a direct link with the older civilizations, the Indian civilization, the Chinese civilization. We have the direct link with the Islamic civilization. And because of our British colonizers, we have the benefit of Western learning. No country has this in the way we have. We have a talented people. We've lost a lot of them to the world. We've got about almost about 800,000 to a million Malaysians in the diaspora out there. 
who have left this country because of Amno Barisan National. And I hope they will come back after the 5th of May. You have to persuade them. So on the 5th of May, let us do one thing. We make sure we come out to vote early. The, weatherma the weatherman says thunderstorms all day. I don't know whether they knew that when they fixed the date. But make sure we come out early. And we need to get to a, the highest turnout we have ever achieved in any general election. Because that's the way we're going to overcome the sum of the cheating that we know is going to happen. We will, we, will, we will be able to stop some of it, but we won't be able to stop all of it. What cheating am I talking about? There are names of voters who have been removed from the roll without their knowledge. Uh, I just had a couple of examples today when I went to Sri Damansara. An Indian man came up to me, showed me his IC and said, I voted five times before here, but now my name is no more on the roll. So I fished out my, my uh, iPhone. We've got a wonderful app in here called PKR app. All of you should download it. And it's got a great, you can immediately check anybody's, uh, uh, what do you call it, voter uh, status. Checked it and he was right, it wasn't there. I had a similar case last year. Ivan Heng from Muthiara Damansara voted five times before. Name was no more on the list. When he checked with SPR, they told him, Mr. Ivan, your name is not there because you're dead. <laughs> so, we know of the many cases of young people overseas who are registered without their knowledge. So I'm not sure who is going to turn up on voting day, voting in their place. Holding whatever I see, we do not know. We know about foreign workers who hold blue ICs and who are also registered. But I want to say this, for those of us who are saying no, you know, despite everything, we will still lose because of the cheating, no. They cannot cheat in such numbers. They can't. It's not possible. So that's what you must appreciate. We must turn out in numbers and we will overcome that. Believe me, we can and we will. We will be vigilant, of course. That is why we are getting organized and that is where you can help. Vigilance to make sure that the van loads of Bangladeshis and Myanmaris don't get to the polling station but in a non-violent way, all right? Because otherwise Ambika will scold me immediately <laughs> if I suggest anything else. <laughs> now, so a high turnout is fundamental and there's another, uh, I think there's something else. Thank you. I just want to share something else that we must do. We have these seven days and I want to share with you the story of the Kota Damansara forest. Uh, some of you may know, the, may know the story. In 2008, when myself, Elizabeth Wong, and Dr. Nase Hashim were campaigning, uh, myself as the candidate for Subang, Dr. Nasir as the candidate for Kota Damansara, and Ali as the candidate for Bukit Lanjan, uh, many of you came to see us and said, Yes, we'll support you, but you sign this pledge to protect the Kota Damansara forest, or what's left of it. You know that forest has got a great history. It started as the Sungai Bulo Forest Reserve in 1896. The British, as usual, had the foresight to create huge areas of green reserves, knowing that this was necessary for the long-term sustainable development of any society. So the 6,000 hectares then, of course, then the greed of Amno Barisa National started chopping it up, slice by slice by slice, and it came down to 400 hectares or about 800 acres. And even that was on the chopping block. Kim Toyo's government had drawn up development plans, shop lots, houses, whatever you call it, the whole thing was going to be flattened. The 
residents of Kota Damansara were really alarmed. They said, no, it's the last green space we have besides the polo ground, Mahathir's little project. But, and you must protect it. We said, fine, because we are committed to sustainable development. That's Pakatan Riots, one of our firm principles. We don't believe in development at any cost. We have to make sure we're responsible, that there is a world for our children's children and their children's children. But I remember saying this to the residents, to the voters then. I said, look, we can win Subang. We can win Kota Damansara. We can win Bukit Lanja. But if we don't win the slang of state government, we can't deliver on this, on this promise. And that's what you must appreciate. So you have to play your part as well. In other words, you have to understand that it means voters all over Selangor must understand we need to change the government of Selangor. But perhaps for that reason and many other reasons, that happened. The miracle happened. 2008, we changed the government of Selangor. We threw out Amno Barista National. We put in Pakatan Rayat. And two years later, that forest is now gazetted as a permanent forest purely for education and limited recreation purposes. I'm sharing this story to say that this is now what we need to appreciate about changing Putrajaya. I think in Slango, we can see the, the, the awareness is there, the feeling is there, but we must realize we need to, we need to add seats in Sabah, in Sarawak, in Johor, in Perak, and all over the place. We need to do that. And we can. That is the mood. A few nights ago in Sigamat, in a big drama where Anwar Ibrahim spoke, I think uh, Kitsiang was there, the crowd was almost 30,000 people. Never happened before in Sigamat. Putrajaya. Putrajaya where, I'm not sure what the actual number of voters is now. Do you know, Ambika? 15,000. 15,000 voters compared to 130,000 in Subang. Can you imagine? Your vote is only one-tenth the value of a Putrajaya voter's vote. And that's not fair. And that's something we will change if you give us the mandate. In Putrajaya last night, uh, Nuraliza was there, Hussam was there, the candidate, and Nick Aziz was there. Uh, Nuraliza was supposed to actually come to Pai Jaras, but she, she couldn't make it because I think she had difficulty getting there, and, and she had to be there. That crowd there was 20,000 over. 20,000 over in Putrajaya with only 15,000 voters. So there is a mood in the air. So, but this is what I want to, share, to, to conclude with. We've got seven days. Now, do you have friends and family in Sabah and Sarawak? I'm sure you have, right? Yes. You have friends and family in Johor, Malacca, Nagri, Sambilan, right? Yes. In Perak and Frangano, right? Yes. So please call them, talk to them. We have to work this together. We have to carry this message of change all over the country. And that is what is going to change you there. So can we do this? Yeah. We have to do this the next seven days. All right? This is not just, of course, we are here, I mean, playing our role as candidates, representatives of the party, representatives of Pakataraya. But what I'm praying is, what I'm want to say tonight to you is, at the end of the day, ladies and gentlemen, you have the power of the vote. Can everybody who's registered to vote here please raise your hands? Okay, that's a good number. So, first message again, you must make sure you get to wherever you're voting. Don't think that your vote is not important. Even every vote counts. Never think I can't be bothered to go back to Perlis to vote. No. You must make the effort. 
And I'm just going to share one quick example. In 2004, in Clanton, some of you may remember, the past, past maintained control of the state of Clanton by a, a majority of only one state seat. And that state seat was won by a majority of two votes. So by two votes, PAS held on to the state government of Clanton. Okay? So that's the power of the vote. Do not ever, ever forget that and think that your one vote does not count. Every vote counts. So we must come out to vote and let's carry this message of change to everyone over the country, all over the country, ladies and gentlemen, and let's together make this happen on the 5th of May. We chase out Amno Barisan National from Putrajaya, bring in a new government, Anwar Ibrahim as the Prime Minister, and a new era and future for Malaysia.